So balanced view uh, is a support system to help us see that the thoughts and emotions that we've taken to be hurdles or challenges are actually just aspects of our ability and power to be of benefit in the world. And that's a huge oversimplification, but um, that's largely what, uh, what balanced view is here. And there's many ways of coming to know within ourselves that we are not uh, at the whim of our thoughts, emotions and experiences. We call, we call all thoughts, emotions and experiences data just to have a simple word to refer to any experience that we have. And um, one example of that was uh, yesterday I was speaking to Cathy. It's so, so nice to sit next to you, Cathy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was saying, yeah, it's funny, Cathy, I just, the last couple of days, it's happened a few times since I've been teaching, the last couple of days I just feel like I've lost the ability to speak. And she said, oh, yeah, that's great. Well, would you like to do the open meeting tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, there's different skillful means for recognising that. Essentially, we make up our limitations. It's funny when, when I, uh, sometimes when I sort of catch myself with a memory that I have of my past where I'm sort of sharing something about my past with somebody and then afterwards I'm just like, wow, I'm lying. <laughs> I'm lying. That was, I, I exaggerated, I totally exaggerated that. You know, and maybe for innocent reasons, like so that it's interesting or so that I'm interesting or something like that. Um, but I realized if you do that enough, then you, your memory actually changes. You know, if you tell the story a certain way enough times, then, yeah, you, that, then that's just what you remember. Um, so... Uh, it's incredible to come to see that, you know, even just with very simple things, for example, um, oh, I felt depressed uh, when I woke up this morning. So that's fair enough. That's something that the person you're speaking to can probably understand and relate to, and I'm sure they can empathize with it. And, but did you really wake up with depression? <laughs> Or are you just making it up? <laughs> and so I don't mean this in a dismissive way, um, you know, to suggest that uh, depression doesn't exist. But does it exist? Like, it's a, <laughs> it's a serious question to ask ourselves. Can you ever find it anywhere? Next time you wake up, can you ever find depression um, in reality? Or can you only find it in your memory? Do you ever feel depressed now? Can you find depression? You know, maybe you think, well, maybe I need to look in the back of my mind. Then what, then you think, well, what am I even talking about? <laughs> what is my mind? Where is my mind? And if you really look, you see, well, my mind is everywhere. <laughs> Wherever there is stuff, that's where <laughs> mind is. <laughs> So mind pervades all stuff, all data. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit startling, you know, to really get real with ourselves and see, yes, uh, incredibly, yes, I have been making it up. <laughs> you know, and it takes a while to get used to that. And that's why we emphasize to take it gently to walk one step at a time and to be gentle with ourselves and to, to be supported, to allow ourselves to be 
guided by people who are assured of the innate freedom of their mind. And, um, yeah, it's really incredible and such a blessing that the instruction is so simple. It really is. Like just short moments, repeated many times, of allowing everything to be as it is. And it can be that the instruction is so simple and so agreeable that we forget to actually do it. And that was certainly my experience a lot, where I remember one open meeting about two years after I'd started coming to Balanced View trainings. Uh, and, and I was like full on, I, I loved it from the beginning, so I was as involved as possible, you know, and, and two years of going to meetings and, and then um, I just realised, oh my God, I, I have been sitting here this, like, I love short moments, it makes total sense to me and I wholeheartedly subscribe to its wisdom and I agree with it and I recommend it to everybody. And then I'm just like, oh, I need to take short moments. <laughs> Me take short moments. It's not just a good idea. Like, oh, okay. And of course, I had been taking short moments, you know, whenever I remembered and felt able. But it was also funny for me to recognize that because I was so used to hearing it and, and it was so agreeable to me that I wasn't actually doing it. <laughs> you know, that well, I've been hearing people talk about short moments, so I must be taking short moments. <laughs> but, um, so then, you know, so there were just several times I remember, you know, in, in just a really common situation, taking a short moment and going, wow, I've never actually done that in this situation before. I've thought about doing it a lot. <laughs> But I've never actually just relaxed. <laughs> and um, it's amazing how it affects the way we speak and the way we act when we're just, when we hang loose, uncontrived, unforced. I remember one time in the car with my father driving, and um, there's just this really normal sense of. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it, but just uh, just two human beings sitting together and sort of this just very subtle kind of, hmm, I'd better think of something interesting to say. And, you know, and I'm a person and my dad's a person and we're in a car and we're driving and, and probably I should say something interesting. Just these kinds of... <laughs> things that I didn't, I've never even noticed that I, that, I, that I have such a boring time in my mind thinking about things like that. And, um, and then I was just like, I can take a short moment. Like, it was a revelation to me. I, I can just take a short moment. I, was, I can believe it. And I've been doing the training for three years, you know, intense, telling other people to take short moments and loving every moment of it and, and uh, it was amazing <laughs> so then I was just relaxed just wow I can just relax nothing needs to be done and um, and so I just did I rested deeply and what I said to my father then was just it freaked us both out <laughs> because it was just yeah I was you know, it, when we take short moments, it, we're, somehow it makes us very real. You know, we're not so intent on overlaying reality with the data that we think we should have. Like being funny, being interesting, <coughs> being sarcastic, being superior, being inferior. All of these are preoccupations. And when we relax, then we're just real. And um, yeah, I said something to him like, why do you think you have served me 
so perfectly my entire life. <laughs> we both just said. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> in that moment, that, that was what was clear to me. Wow, this man sitting next to me, my entire life he has served me. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Wow. Like, just because it's, just because it's kind of normal that, oh yeah, well, parents are supposed to blah, blah, blah. But no, like, he's a human being, and he's served me my entire life. Like, when I was just contributing nothing, all I could do was poo myself and eat food. That's all I knew how to do, that was, the, that was the extent of my contribution. And, you know, he just continuously doing things for me. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> so that was kind of a different conversation to just going, oh yeah, the rugby and yeah, the, the rugby match and stuff, which is also beautiful, but it's nice to just cut through every, all the bullshit, you know, and just speak to each other as if it's the last time we ever will. Um, because that's really what we want to do. There's something very dissatisfying about relating any other way. And um, so relying on open intelligence and the mainstays, it just brings us back into alignment, you know, where we're not any more distracted by uh, the way we've taught, we've been taught innocently taught to behave. <coughs> Nobody's intentionally given us, you know, any example that isn't beneficial, but just, just through having not been educated uh, in the nature of mind, we, we have no choice. We just, we have no idea what the solution is. And how sad is that? <laughs> so it's, it's great great fortune to be here together, incomprehensible fortune. And, you know, if, if this is the first time we've come and, and heard uh, about the teaching and about the support that's available, I would really recommend to, to just take it one step at a time, gentle, gentle. And like you heard Candice say, there's so much free talks and books on the, on the website. When I first came and when I, went, when I went home, that's what I did. I just had talks on all day while I was doing whatever I was doing, the washing up or cooking. I just had talks on. And, um, and it, just, it just kept that instinctive recognition just gradually becoming more familiar to me. Everything that Candice was sharing in the talks just slowly, slowly was becoming my own experience. And it was such a huge support to me. I can't tell you what a support it was. And um, I was so grateful that it was all just there for free. I didn't have to do anything. I just go onto the website, download it, and there it was. So I'd, I'd really recommend that. And um, if you live in Bristol, that's wonderful because we have obviously this beautiful community here and we have meetings every week that you can come to and just, just to get more of a feel for what this is and your own experience. And uh, we can help you with what the next steps might be if you want to, if you want to take those next steps as well. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>